listening to Nightmare on Film Street. The current time is 666. Traffic is clear ahead from here to the afterlife. But it's hell outside. For the next hour, you're on Nightmare Time. So, let's give a grave welcome to our hosts, John and Kim. Hello again, fiends, and welcome to this bonus episode of Nightmare on Film Street. We're back on Nightmare Alley this week. We're talking with two Swiss filmmakers about a fucking bonkers grindhouse B-movie that they made recently called Mad Heidi. It's so hard to say it not in a grindhouse way. <laughs> I mean, I, I almost kind of did, but yeah, like all I want to do is say Mad Heidi, the way you would say like machete. Like that's how that's that how was that, really good. Thank you. That's how that <laughs> movie and this movie should be pronounced. Like you should never say it with like it's I'm watching machete tonight. You should be like I'm watching machete tonight. <laughs> it's, it should always be like that. Like it's an like it's its own language. Anyway, I'm John. I'm Kim, and we're joined today uh, by the co-directors. You Johannes Hartman and Sandro Klofstein. Uh, this, uh, as as you'll learn, is a spoof action dystopian movie. Uh, <laughs> that's that's sort of um, playing off of the Heidi films, which is adapted from a sweet a Swiss book. It's basically a story about a girl in the Alps, but this girl in the Alps has to deal with the fucking like Nazi style dictatorship, an underground cheese ring <laughs> where like where go. Goat cheese is like bricks of cocaine. She goes to prison. She fights in a fucking gladiator pit. It is a wild movie. And in true fashion, how we like to roll at Nightmare on Film Street and support independent filmmakers, this is an entirely independent film. Yeah. So apparently the uh, film industry in Switzerland doesn't have a surprise, surprise, large genre market. Mm -hmm. And it was really hard for them to get this project made. But with the help of crowdfunding, uh, social backing, and basically the fans and the, the industry wanting to do these fun projects, they made it happen. And they're distributing it themselves too which is also really crazy yeah you can watch the movie right now Matt Heidi came out uh, December 8th you can check it out on their website they throw the link at the end of the episode it's also in the show notes if you want to just save the interview for for after you've watched the movie we highly encourage you check it out it is definitely uh, you know in a year where we are constantly seeing more and more elevated horror movies it's nice to watch a movie that you can just like crack a beer and have a whole big bowl of chips and Switzerland is fucking gorgeous. I want to see more spooky movies That's the other thing, there. right? Yeah, we got to get over there. Do you guys got ghosts there? Like, <laughs> make it happen. Show me your Swiss ghosts. <laughs> Do they haunt clocks? Did they mean goats? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to kick it over to the trailer, and then uh, we're going to... We're going to be joined by the, the filmmakers to talk about this crazy movie. Uh, just a quick little heads up. We did have one hell of a fucking day when we were recording this, and we had to use our backup mic. But uh, Johannes and Sandro, uh, they're, they're coming in crystal clear in this episode. So still perfectly suitable audio. But if you're nitpicky like me, you'll notice a small difference. <laughs> ah, peaceful Switzerland. Beautiful mountains. Delicious cheese. And, of course, Heidi. Go, Peter! I love you, baby girl. But you've seen nothing yet. We are citizens. Today, we shall celebrate Switzerland's new order. Gentlemen, to world domination. To world domination. This man has been charged with the production of illegal dairy products. From the Alps is back <laughs> with a vengeance. Get ready for action. Beautiful Swiss girls, Swiss army katanas, and of course, fondue boarding. I love the smell of cheese in the morning. This is the cheesiest movie you'll ever see. The only good cheese is fried cheese. I'm coming for you, you fucking bastard! She's one badass Heidi. She's mad Heidi. 
Friday. Wow, wow, wow. Something's yodeling in my pants. <laughs> So, Johannes, Sandro, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us on the show today. It's our pleasure. Thanks yeah, and thank for you having for, us. And thank you for making such a weirdo movie. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the idea for Mad Heidi come from? Because you're, you're playing on a sort of history of, of Swiss films already, but like, when did you both decide to make the most madcap version of that story? <laughs> Well, I think first was the idea for this Swiss exploitation concept. That's how we call our uh, genre that we invented, basically, because we were desperate that in Switzerland, nobody makes genre films because like in most European countries, most of the films are funded through the state's uh, cultural funds. So they usually uh, fund art house films and things like that. So it's kind of difficult to uh, make a genre film. So we thought, yeah, if they always do the same kind of uh, Swiss movies, then uh, we do the same thing, but our way. <laughs> and um, yeah, suddenly had the idea, why not mix these uh, cliches of the perfect, uh, peaceful Switzerland <laughs> and mix it up uh, with a dystopian future scenario and with B-movie elements. Uh, so then first there was the idea for this uh, term, Swiss exploitation. Then um, we realized, okay, there's an interest from producers and from fans. So uh, we had to come up with a story around it. And obviously Heidi, everybody knows Heidi. No matter where on the world you tell someone about the movie called Mad Heidi, they can immediately imagine something. Um, yeah, we basically try to, you know, take all the famous cliches, all the stereotypes about Switzerland, um, not necessarily you know, looking at it from the inside, but uh, also from the outside, from what other countries uh, know about Switzerland, and take all these things and um, turn them on their heads. And obviously, everybody knows Heidi as this jolly little mountain girl. So turning her into a fierce killing machine <laughs> seemed pretty natural. So you mean to tell me there there actually isn't an underground cheese uh, drug market? <laughs> this isn't a documentary? <laughs> um, not that we know of, but yeah. <laughs> Do you guys like cheese or hate cheese? <laughs> Uh, we still like cheese, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can still eat it even after the. Uh, <laughs> maybe we're just uh, uh, ignorant or uh, or uneducated. I don't know. Maybe you know about Heidi, but like I was relatively unaware of what the Heidi films were. Like in, in North America, we have something, or at least in the states, we're we're in Canada. Uh, they had these Pollyanna movies, which I think are probably just sort Based of like, of yeah, America's version of that. So, like, what's the core Heidi story? Well, uh, in the original, it's about, um, yeah, Heidi becomes an orphan. So her aunt, who is looking out for her, brings her to her grandfather, who's a farmer in the Swiss Alps. Grumpy um, old man, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and first, he doesn't like it there. And then... Uh, at some point, she starts kind of liking it, and then the aunt <laughs> comes back and basically brings her to Frankfurt to some rich, fancy family, and <laughs> they're, um, they they, they want to teach her some manners there because she's from the mountains, and she meets her friend there uh, who's in a wheelchair, Clara. And um, oh, okay. so basically we switched that in our movie that she's <laughs> not in the wheelchair in the beginning. Then basically Clara goes to her to the mountains and in the end Clara gets healed and doesn't need the wheelchair anymore because Heidi and... The magic of the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> and also Heidi has a boyfriend, Peter. I think in the American, like in the Disney uh, uh, version of it, he's called Peter, Peter the Goat Hurt. Like the 1937 version is called the Goat General for whatever reason. <laughs> Goat General. <laughs> But in the Swiss uh, version, he's called Goat Peter. So we thought this sounds uh, pretty weird to any <laughs> English speaking person, probably. Uh, we thought, well, let's just uh, call him exactly that. Wow. We loved that so much. Every time it came up, everybody specifically, they had to say Goat Peter. Like, they were just Peter. <laughs> Even his father. I'm like, his dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when um, when Alice, the actress who plays Heidi, first read the script, she's English, so uh, she she doesn't know him as Go Peter either. <laughs> and at first, she wasn't sure whether 
she would have a sexy scene with the goat. <laughs> or a guy like, uh, Is the goat named Peter? Or? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, well, fuck it. I'll do it anyway. <laughs> wow, that's the problem with making a movie that's just breaking every rule. Like, if, if you don't have any uh, understanding of the source material, you're like, it could, like, that, it could just as easily be that she's got a goat boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah. props to her for, yeah. for doing it anyway. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, um, yeah. yeah, probably the mo the one that is most known to the American audience is the one from the 30s with Shirley Temple as Heidi. Yeah. Shit, I mean, I, I might actually have seen that movie. My mom loved Shirley Temple, so I had, to, <laughs> I had to sit through all those. Did you guys hate these movies as a kid? Like, did you, like, like everybody had to watch it and it was just felt like torture? Uh, um, I don't think they were really part of our education in school. I mean, for sure you watch them at some point, but it's not like every school kid in Switzerland has seen the Heidi movies. It's not like yeah. that. There's also a famous um, Japanese anime that was very popular in, in like the German-speaking countries. I believe, actually, I watched that first as a little kid. That's oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. We have in Canada um, Anne of Green Gables. Oh, yeah. Very similar. It's like girl with long braids. And I remember in school just hating her so much. And then we went to like the filming locations and stuff. Like talk about Canada exploitation. <laughs> have you guys made anybody angry with your version of Heidi? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, it pisses some people <laughs> off. Uh, even already uh, four years ago when we f released is this first promotional or concept teaser together with our crowdfunding campaign. We only had a teaser. Nobody knew exactly what's going to be in the movie. It was just a two minute teaser, but it made uh, Victorian Ox, the company who manufactures the Swiss army knives, they threatened to sue us because wow. they was using the army knife as a weapon. <laughs> um, one of our uh, co-writers who had a job at the Zurich Police Department got fired <laughs> when, they figured, <laughs> when they figured out that in his free time he was writing on Mad Heidi. Wow. Yeah, that's like incredible. That. <laughs> wow. It, it is crazy, too, though, because when you watch the movie, it's gorgeous. Like, you guys do a great job of making us want to go to Switzerland, even though they have a uh, cheese dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, we thought exactly the same, you know, um, for the Victorinox guys, the Swiss Army Knife guys. Uh, we made our own designs to, to be printed on those uh, knives. And that's how they found out about us because we ordered a bunch of. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and um, they like we already. Unfortunately, we already started the pre-sale and it sold extremely well. So we like, you know, what the hell? Just uh, you know, go with it. There's some new new customers or yeah, uh, new visitors to Switzerland as well. Um, but yeah, apparently. Not everybody is that liberal. <laughs> wow. Just making enemies with your cool little movies. It's funny we get laugh and hate from, from all sides. For example, a couple of days ago, we got on the front page of the biggest Swiss newspapers because some Christian parent uh, organization complained that the movie is rated 16 in theaters and not 18. Uh, <laughs> um, so they, they demanded a higher age rating. Then there were quotes from the head of this organization talking about how yeah he cannot understand how anybody would want to watch a movie <laughs> like Mad Hyde. And then two days later, we have the media, the official media portal of the Catholic Church of Switzerland, who wrote a great <laughs> review about the movie about <laughs> Heidi. Um, <laughs> I mean, talk about great free advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah, we loved it. <laughs> yeah, you guys should just continue to mine stuff from your culture that people find. Uh... Yeah, every every teenager in Switzerland now wants to watch your movie. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I was a kid or a teenager, and um, you know, there was the parental advisory sticker on all the albums. Like those are the good oh, ones. Yeah, <laughs> shit, I gotta have them. You know? <laughs> exactly. So, like, you're you're saying that there isn't really a big genre film scene or at least market in uh in in switzerland how did you get into the sort of 70s grindhouse exploitation movies that you guys are riffing on here i guess the real interest of older movies because i'm uh, i'm an, i'm born in the mid 80s so uh 
I'm too young for the 70s uh, B movies in the theaters. So I think the real interest for old movies started to me when we were already filmmakers and um, when I was starting to uh, look more into film history and everything. And so that's that's when I started to get a, develop a real interest for 70s movies. But I grew up pretty much without TV and everything. So oh, wow. <laughs> probably the reason I make gory movies <laughs> now because I wasn't allowed to watch them as a kid. <laughs> Uh, well, I watched a lot of TV uh, as a kid. I was just in the right age to get into like things like uh, American Ninja, you know, all the canon movies, um, all the Jean-Claude Van Damme stuff, Steven Seagal. And I had an old, older cousin as well who was watching all the Hong Kong stuff. So I got quite the education quite early on. That's cool. Are the, were those movies harder to find when you were younger? Like, I mean, f you know, for us, they're they're basically made around here. So, like, getting somebody to distribute them is not that hard. But uh, they, were, uh, movies. they were in uh, German television, basically. Uh, oh, okay. German dubbed uh, versions of them. Um, With the horror movies, it's kind of difficult because Germany has a pretty strict uh, censorship and there's a lot of horror movies that are basically illegal in Germany and you can only get cut versions on Blu-ray or DVD. And it's ridiculous what kind of movies got censored 20 years ago, for example. Evil Dead <laughs> was on the index until last year and then last right. year wow. then after 30 years you can do a new rating and now they rated it 16 and before <laughs> it was it was not allowed to sell an uncut version of evil dead in germany and so because switzerland also speaks german uh, we usually have the same um, video and blu-ray releases uh, that you get in germany so the movies that you can't get in germany were also difficult to get uh, in Switzerland back in the VHS days. So, yeah, for some horror movies, it was difficult to find uncut versions. Is there like a big underground market of people like trading in movies from like America? <laughs> uh, well, um, I don't think so. I guess that's at all, least you know. uh, not anymore because now you can just, uh, you know, internet <laughs> over the internet but i remember i had some friends uh, back in the days they would have their dvds shipped from from somewhere else just the discs and so it wouldn't would be wouldn't less flag the... uh, when it crossed the border and stuff like that <laughs> wow the things you used to have to do that's crazy <laughs> yeah. sneaking dvds and cheese <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but nowadays, of course, we can also order from Vinegar Syndrome or yeah, of course, <laughs> whatever yeah. the label. And I yeah. buy a lot of stuff from Arrow Video in the UK. There's a lot of great Blu-ray labels in the UK. Yeah, no, it's it's really uh, like th things have definitely changed. Like the idea that movies used to be basically illegal is just like such a foreign concept to me. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's cool that uh, that you guys are are riffing on it and you're bringing it to Switzerland. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, crowd crowdfunding wise, like obviously that opens it up so that way you can you can get backers worldwide. How how has the response been from the genre fans in Switzerland? Yeah, very well. And the cool thing in Switzerland, we we are not limited to the genre fans. We have a lot of people now who love the movie or are following the project for a long time who who say they would usually not watch a movie like that, but because it's the, the first Swiss movie, they're really excited for it and they want to watch it. That's cool. I think the further away we get from Switzerland, the more niche is our audience. <laughs> In the US, it's probably just the exploitation and uh, trash movie fans. While, uh, <laughs> in Switzerland and its neighboring country, everybody knows Matt Heidi so we also got quite a big release now in Germany we had over a hundred uh, cities like 150 screens in a hundred cities which is uh, quite good for a movie like that and that's amazing 60 screens in Switzerland Switzerland is super small uh, so <laughs> yeah for example what's the we now we were now on rank four of the weekly uh, box office ranking on Swiss no way. Switzerland. That's so cool. That's amazing, guys. The numbers are terrible at the moment. It's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you need 4,000 people to be in the top 10, uh, 4,000 people within a week. 
Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the Disney movie that is currently playing had only a few more vis- uh, visitors last week. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great, too, because you guys really did it independently, like you crowdfunded. And uh, there's something really cool about that, because the people going to see your movie potentially were the people that helped you make it. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. We had quite a few of our uh, investors um, be extras. Oh, cool. Um, Heidi Stad uh, in the opening scene, for example, who gets killed. He was an uh, investor. And um, one of the perks that we did uh, in the early days was, um, you know, for all the people that really always wanted to be in a, in a film, but their acting skills are shit. <laughs> so we offered um, people to play uh, corpses. Oh, that's great! <laughs> Anybody can be a corpse. <laughs> and they also they also sometimes helped us to find like uh, specific props. Like we have a Discord channel, and whenever uh, we were looking for something like uh, Goat Peter's uh, pimp suit, for example, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we couldn't find the right one. And we just posted it uh, on Discord, and then uh, we got like five or six uh, different cards to choose from. That's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was amazing. Crowdsourced a pimp costume. <laughs> yeah, like not even just crowdfunded, like you're, you're crowd developed, <laughs> crowd produced, really. <laughs> That's amazing. What was, it, what was it like getting Casper Van Dien on the project? Well, uh, of course, we sent him the script and he immediately laughed it. Or first his agent laughed it and then Casper laughed it. And, of course, he worked for much less than what he would usually get paid. But uh, yeah, he really loved the project. And it was. we were, of course, a bit nervous because uh, yeah, you don't know. You get somebody from Hollywood and you don't <laughs> know if they are complicated or whatever and then uh, he arrived and yeah but it was immediately uh had a great time with him and he brought a lot of joy to the set constantly entertaining the entire crew and also had a lot of inputs and ideas and was very professional i mean you you could definitely tell that he made well over 100 movies uh, he was very experienced he's a really fun character he's always on <laughs> Yeah, he was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. Uh, and I think he was quite disappointed that uh, he's only had five shooting days and then uh, he would basically have to leave the party. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, everybody else stayed on for a few more weeks. Yeah, he's he's uh, a tough character to to cast, I would think, because he's supposed to be evil. Like we all know who he's playing on, and and he has to be really, really goofy at the same time. And uh, it, it, you know, obviously, great choice, but like just a great character. So uh, I mean, the, the movie's loaded with them, but I think the thing that I probably respond to most is you know, exploding heads and stuff. Talk to me about your your special effects team, yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's another thing. I mean, in Switzerland, if you be first, we don't have a big, big film industry, and then second, there's not a lot of genre films that are produced. So, uh, special effects, makeup artists, they can maybe do a shot wound for a for a TV crime show or something like that <laughs> in the normal their normal uh, day daily lives and so everybody was really excited that they could finally work on a project uh, where they can do a bit more um, but of course it was also challenging because uh, it was uh, yeah everybody was making their experience and learning every day but yeah we try to do as much as possible uh, practical but combine it with uh, modern techniques like for example the goat peter's head um, we we uh, put the actor on location, we film the scene, then we leave the camera there, take the actor out and put in a dummy head in the same position with the green screen behind it. And then we blow up the dummy head so we can <laughs> composite it together. So in the end, the entire body and everything is still from the real actor, while only the part of the head that explodes is from the dummy. And I think that's the best way to combine the old traditional technique with the advantages of visual effects and uh, yeah make uh, an effect that looks uh, super real of course totally over the top but <laughs> real <laughs> yeah 
yeah and also just i always think even if a if a practical effect doesn't turn out very well it's still 10 times cooler than a <laughs> mediocre digital effect because yeah it's still yeah. it's still more real if it's a bad practical effect feels still more real than a mediocre digital effect yeah definitely yeah and you get more leeway with a grindhouse film anyways people just want to see gore they don't care how <laughs> how on point it is even though like you guys do some really insane stuff in it <laughs> Yeah, that is true. And that, of course, was also a, a big challenge because these, I mean, we had a decent budget, but these effects, uh, yeah, I mean, for a movie with that much action and effects, it wasn't really a lot of money. So, uh, uh, yeah, these effects always take so much time and there's a high risk of failing. I mean, sometimes, yeah, the blood is not squirting and it's <laughs> slowing down and then it takes you 30 minutes every time to reset it. And if you don't have a budget for 10 costumes, uh, you can run into the problem that the costume is already full of blood and you still haven't shot the, the effect yet. And things like that that make it very challenging and uh, like yeah, yeah of course i would love to have more <laughs> gore moments in the movie absolutely but, um, <laughs> challenging enough uh, on this tight shooting schedule with the effects that we have <laughs> yeah next time yeah we still need uh how do you say some room to uh to go bigger or or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was gonna say do you guys have more Swiss exploitation films uh in the canon <laughs> uh, well yeah we're still a little bit busy with this one oh of course <laughs> Till the blu-ray and the soundtrack is out and and all of that but uh as you might have seen in the end <laughs> all right we've got plans We've got some ideas in the in the backs of our heads. Um, like hopefully uh, in March we can take a few days or hopefully a few weeks off to refresh our brains. And um, if all things go well uh, with Mad Heidi One, we would like to to uh, start working on the script for part two. And apart from that, uh, there's at least one or two ideas for something not Heidi related, but still Swiss quotation. But first, obviously, we would like to continue Heidi's uh, Heidi's story for a bit. That's awesome. And that said, everybody's going to be able to see Mad Heidi on December 8th. Where can they watch it? They can stream it on our own website, madheidi.com. If they're in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, Spain, and Bolivia. There's still a chance to catch it in the cinema as cool. of uh, right now. Um, and then sometimes uh, next year we'll also um, we'll basically give it to anyone like Google and Apple and uh, whoever wants it. <laughs> and in Canada, we are uh, Raven Banner is our distributor. Oh, amazing. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, we love Raven Banner. They're so fun. Them too. I have. Yeah, I love Turbo Kid, of course. Who uh, Raven Band oh, just yeah, released yeah. the VHS edition of Turbo Kid, and yeah, uh, yeah. So we're, I'm very happy that we ended up with Raven Banner. That's very cool. They have such a good like collection. You guys will fit in perfectly. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us on the show today. We we like to close out every interview by asking like what your dream double feature would be at the drive-in if you could play any two movies. What would what would you two guys play? <laughs> Well, I have to say, since we're coming from Switzerland, I've never been to a drive-in in my entire life. You guys don't have drive-ins? Okay. <laughs> we got to get you over here sometime, man. But it's quite there, rare. There were some oh, yeah. here and there, but it wasn't, wasn't ever really a thing, uh, drive-ins. But um, I'm confident that you guys know drive-in movies based on the movie you made. So, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's for sure, yeah. <laughs> One of them, I'm not sure if Carpenter is too good for driving, but I would really <laughs> love to see a, a creepy Carpenter movie like Halloween or uh, The Thing or The Fog in a drive yeah. The Fog would be really great. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, he's gone off to his DVD collection. <laughs> <laughs> a movie that actually takes place in the drive-in theater, uh, Dead End Drive-In. Oh. oh, yeah. Still, We still haven't seen this one. we got to cross it off. Yeah, I really liked this one. Uh, in, at least in Europe, it's released by Arrow Video. 
and it's from uh, Brian Tranchard Smith, the uh, Australian oh, yeah. exploitation uh, master. Brad. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put that one at the top of the watch list. It, uh, it plays with the scenario, but what happens if a uh, driving business uh, doesn't work anymore and the owner of a driving theater needs to get uh, creative new income ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would probably choose um, Wild Zero, some really weird Japanese one. Okay. Uh, with like a bunch of rock and roll dudes and a <laughs> zombie pandemic and some gender bending. <laughs> so weird. Punk rock, love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah that one and then probably you know that's such a hard question i know <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna say santa sangre by uh Kodorowski. that's a that's a wild night of the drive-in you guys like both of these nights sound great like if they were you know you go to a drive-in that's got two screens i don't know which one i'd choose those are great things <laughs> <picks. laughs> nice yeah <laughs> Well, guys, thank you again so much uh, for chatting with us. And thank you so much for making just a buck wild movie in a part of the world that doesn't really seem to make them. So I'm, I'm sure the genre fans like uh, are, are stoked for Mad Heidi. <laughs> we hope so. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having us. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much to co-directors Johannes and Sandro for joining us and talking about Mad Heidi. <laughs> uh, if you want to check out Mad Heidi, it is available for VOD right now as of December 8th. You just need to go to madheidi.com or just click the link in our show notes and it'll take you right there. We'll be back again next Thursday with a regular episode of Nightmare on Film Street. We're recapping our favorite movies of 2022. I'm sure there, you've read a hundred lists already but. and here comes out and here comes another one yeah if you're <laughs> curious what we uh really responded to this year and if you're looking for some movies to watch over the holiday break we have got a great lineup ready for you but until then i'm john i'm kim stay, stay creepy. creepy what if i started doing the stay creepy in the grindhouse voice what if i did that well i can't compete with it now nah, let's just try it let's go let's let's give it a, let's give it a fair <laughs> shake this is the one time to do it all right okay. one Two, three. Stay, Stay creepy. creepy. I almost said Mad Heidi. Like, I, <laughs> I almost just said Mad Heidi again. It appears you made it out alive, but we'll get you next time. Help us to grow the horde. Leave a five star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you subscribe. More terror can be found lurking on our website, nofspodcast.com. Until next time, stay creepy, fiends. 